Okay, moving along to our next task number four with standard community. So we need to configure our six to advertise this loopback 12 with community of 200 colon 12 and ensure that community value is being received or seen by all the way to R5 and R7. Okay, so a standard community or community in general is nothing but a tag. So just like any other routing protocol, you're able to tag the route. BGP uses the community values as a tag. And later on, you can create, which we'll see in the next task right here, we can create a filter based on the certain tags being uh, matched. All right, so in order for the routers to exchange community, you have to make sure they are configured to send and receive community. So let's start our configuration on router one. By default, the community is being displayed as a long integer. If you want this to be displayed in this format, then you have to enable BGP new format. Otherwise, it's just gonna show up as an integer value. Okay, and then under BGP 100, since R1 is currently using template or peer template, then we can just make a change at the template level. In order to do that, we have to get under the template. Well, just to refresh your memory as far as what we have right here, as you can see, we have the peer policy template and peer session template for the send community that is categorized as the peer policy template. So we have to copy paste and then do a send community right here. Okay, if you press enter by default, it's just saying they're standard community. If you want it to send both standard and extended, then you obviously have to specify both or extend it just for the extended community only. And that's usually used as part of the MPLS uh, VPN where the extended community value is the route target. Okay, but for us, we only deal with the standard. You can type in standard, it's nothing wrong with that, but the standard option is not gonna show up when you do show run. Okay, so that takes care of both R2 and R5 session from R1. And R1 also have a neighbor of R3. So we're gonna have to do a separate command for R3. Okay, just gonna go through fairly quickly since this is pretty much repeating. IP BGP new format, router BGP 100 template, peer policy, S100 send community standard and then R2 has to neighbor 16.172.16.123.4 send community and then 27.7 which is the R7 okay now it's just to complete AS100 let's get into R5 IP BGP new format router BGP 100, template peer policy 100, same community, standard. Okay, next uh, we have to configure that on R3. R3 has a peer of 1, 4, and 6. IP BGP new format, router BGP 200, neighbor R6 and then R1 and then R4 okay now we have R6 to configure new format router BGP 200 and R6 is the neighbor of R3 and R4. R3 using its loopback. And then R4. Okay, and then on R4, R4 has the peer of three and six as part of the peer group and then R2. Okay, so R4, router uh, IP, BGP, new format, router BGP 300 neighbor using peer group call AS200 with sent community. So that takes care of both R3 and R6. And then 16123.2 sent community. OK, 
Okay, now our final router that we need to enable that on is router 7, IP BGP, new format, router BGP 65123. And remember we have our R7 placed under a VRF. So we need to get under the VRF BGP and then 27.2 Saint Community. All right. So now that we have enabled all rounds for the routers to be able to exchange community values, now we have to configure R6 to advertise to back 12 with the community of 212. So getting on to R6, we're going to use prefix list to match the route that we need to advertise with the community value, which is R6 loop back 12 with permit six, uh, that would be 6620 slash 24. Okay, and then route map. So R6 has to advertise that to R3 and R4. So first we're gonna come up with uh, one route map called to R3, permit 10, match IP address prefix list, copy paste, and then we can set our tag, which is our community. So set community. You can see you can also use a community list which we will look at in our next task, but for now it's just gonna be a, we're gonna define the community value inline right here, and then you can see that you can do the integer format, or you can do the autonomous system number and number format with the colon in between, which is what we're gonna do, and that for us is 212, and then don't forget to permit everything else. Okay, and then we come up with another route map for our four, going to have exact same thing, the set community, and then uh, for permit 20. Okay, just do up arrows on that. Now, to apply the route map, we get under the router BGP 200. First takes care of R3, route map, not router, route map, to R3, out. And then the other one is 2R4 is 46.4. Don't forget to do a route refresh outbound. We talked about route refresh in the previous task to make sure that the filter is taking effect on all of the existing routes. So we'll clear that and also routes going to router four. Okay, we have to give it a second, and then we can hop. If everything works correctly, the routes will be tagged or with the community value, and it should be seen by R5 and R7. So we hop to R5, and then show IP BGP 6620. You can see right here the community value appears on the route. Okay, 212. And let's confirm on the R7 as well, 6620 zero yep and I totally forgot it's on VRF so that means you're going to need the VPN v4 VRF BGP there you go and looks like that guy is not seeing it so let's double check that on R2 And obviously R2 sees that, but somehow R7 is not seeing it. So let's make sure it's not just the, uh, make sure we have that configured correctly. So let's show run. Yep, and I can see it right here. So not too sure why it's not coming in quite yet. Let's make sure that R2 has that configured too for Sand Community. Yep, looks like we totally missed uh, R7 when we enabled the Sand Community, so let's take care of that real quick. And that's why it's not working. So uh, 100, neighbor, 27.7, Sand Community. Let's see, we have to refresh the routes or not, or it would take effect immediately. 
so that you have to uh, clear. Let's just go ahead and clear the BGP to 162.16.27.7 out. There you go. So it showed up after we do a route refresh outbound from R2 to R7, the community of 212. Okay, so now that R5 and R7 both have successfully received the route of R6 loopback 12 with the community value that we need. So that pretty much completes uh, task number four for us. Okay, next is our task number five, policy list. So we need to configure R1 and R2 to stop learning any routes being originated from AS200 that has been tagged by community value of 200 colon 12 and that's basically our, our six loop back 12 that we configured back in task number four and we must use policy list so policy list is nothing but a container for your match statements for your route map so instead of configuring your match statements directly under the route map you can kind of group them together under the policy list and then apply the policy list as part of your route map so it's just a modular way to configure your route map in the other words all right so start off with R1 and just to make sure that R1 receives routes originated from AS200 and the way to do that is do a show IP BGP reg 200 dollar sign for the originated routes you can see these are the routes that's coming or being originated from AS200 at the moment then we're going to have to come up with the AS path since we are again matching based on the AS number. So AS path access list, let's do a 10 uh, permit. And we say anything that's originated from AS200. So the way to write that or match that in regex is underscore 200 dollar sign. Okay, and the other match condition that we need is to match the community of 212. And we can do that similarly to AS path by using community list. So it's a very similar kind of things, which is the access list for our community values. You can do community list. You can do expanded, so you can give it the name instead of the number for the community list. Or you can do a standard. So I was just going to do a basic community list number 10. Again, we're dealing with permit or deny. So we're going to permit community number. In other words, we are matching it 212. Okay, now we've got our two components to construct our match statements. So we're going to go under IP policy list. We're going to call it block and then permit. Okay, and if the question mark, the only pretty much configurable option for us under the policy list is the match. If we do match and question mark, these are pretty much the same parameter that you can, or attribute that you can perform matching on under the route map. Okay, so we're gonna match first is the AS path, number 10. And we're also gonna match our community. And it's calling for a community list since we already built that. With the number 10, we're going to do match community 10. Okay, now that we have our policy list, we can utilize that under the route map. So we're going to create a route map called from R3. And we're going to deny whatever is being matched by policy list, which is our gold. So match policy list block. Okay, so essentially uh, what we accomplish with a single match policy list command is we're matching both of the AS path 10 and community 10. Okay, and again, don't forget to permit everything else. Now to apply that, it's just like any other route map. So neighbor 162.16.123.3, route map from R3 in, and then clear IPVGP, route refresh inbound, then you can do show IP BGP regex one more time. And you can see now that before, I don't know if I still have that up here, right there. So we know that this particular route, which is our six loopback 12, has been tagged by 
community 212 and before it was being learned directly from uh, 3 but since we have that filter configured to match that particular route coming from R3 it's now instead learning that route through R2 so to complete our requirements that means uh, which is configure R1 and to just stop learning that routes off together we also have to apply as you can see right here right now we're stopping only routes coming in this way instead that route is coming in through R2 now so we're gonna have to create another prefix list or actually we can just reuse it although the name it's not intuitive but since we use the name from R2, R3 but we can easily use that same route map and apply it for the routes coming in from R2 okay so let's do that so what we need to do is using the same route map like I said the name you might have to change the name so it's more intuitive but for our intended purposes we can just do 0 0.2 and then do a clear 0 0.2 okay and then we do show IP BGP summer uh, rich 200 and you can see we no longer learns that particular route from whether it's R3 or R2 all right, so we're gonna to have to repeat the same process for R2. So let me bring up a notepad just to save us some configuration time. We know that we're gonna need this two command. We need our policy list. And then we need our route map, just right here. And then we can just configure the filter ourselves. Okay, so got that, got that. This time R2 is going to be from R4, although we're going to use that from the route from R1 as well. And then router BGP 100. Neighbor is 16123.4. Route map from R4 in. We're just going to use that same one. Although we should no longer be learning that routes from R1, but just to protect ourselves and make sure that never happens, we can do that. Oh, actually, it's this zero. Go copy. Uh, that's going to be on R2. Obviously, on R2, if you do a show IP BGP before we apply that command, two hundred dollar sign. We just we're still learning that routes six six two zero from R4. Copy that, paste, do clear IPBGP, route refresh inbound from R4. And then let's take another look at the routes being originated from 200. You can see that 6620 route slash 24 is no longer there since it's being blocked by our route map. Okay, so that's how you use the policy list, and that completes our task number five.